Good morning, it's time to talk about the Cordwood Challenge last year, 2017, how it went and the participants. I have a website set up. I'm gonna go through the list of people and I'll say a few things about them, but you know, go check out the page and it has links to all their videos and stuff like that. And I'll also put links to their channels if they have YouTube channels in the description to this video. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should make a playlist. Well, I'll make it a public playlist that you can add videos to and it'll be called Axe Cordwood Challenge 2017. Find that and stick your videos in there if you want to. As far as just generally how the project went, I thought it went great. Um, I didn't really push it that much because I didn't want it. It was kind of, this year was just sort of like throwing it out there, not very organized. I didn't think it out that well. And I just wanted to get started and see what we'd learn from, you know, this first round. And we ended up with uh, eight people that cut a full cord or more. I would say that just counting up the quantity of wood cut, it's probably over 12 cords. That is a pile of wood right there. Um, each cord is approximately 8 by 4 by 4 feet. So if you imagine 12 of those stacked up, what is that? Um, 8 feet long would be 48 feet long. That's a bunch of wood. So, uh, great job, guys. Pretty cool. I think that this year we can expect a lot more people. I've had lots of people write me and say, are you doing the challenge? When is the challenge? I want to do the challenge, you know, stuff like that. We're going to do it this year, but we're going to change a few rules. It's going to be simpler, easier, a little more inclusive, I think. I'll tell you just real briefly at the end of this video, but I'll, I should have a challenge video out, like an official challenge video out by uh, January 1st. That's the plan. That plan is to go from January 1st to September 1st, and I'll talk about that too. So let's run through these people though, and uh, talk about them because they are cool. Timothy Sutton, Flatland Woodsman, is his YouTube channel. He cut uh, over two cords with his family. He cut the most wood of anybody, and it was fun to watch his videos because he has kids out there, and they're super cute and super excited, and way to go, Sutton family. Come on, you can do it. It's almost there. Oh, she's through. Got the two kids working in the background. Hurrah! Tim Springston of Oxbow Farms cut the second highest quantity of wood. He cut uh, one and three quarters cords. He was going to cut two cords, but he's like a real farmer, so he had to go be responsible and grow food because plants wait for no man. He made some really nice looking videos and uh, he has a oxen or a cow of some kind. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know my cows. He has some kind of uh, oxen or something that he uses to pull his logs out of the woods and for farm work and stuff. So that was really cool and uh, good stuff. Check him out. Todd Walker, uh, Survival Sherpa. He has a blog called Survival Sherpa and a YouTube channel. Really good stuff. Uh, Self-reliance information. Really cool guy. Excellent writer and just all around, uh, you know, scholar and a gentleman. And he made some great videos, uh, a lot of experimenting and uh, probably more instructional than anyone else's videos who did the challenge. Cool stuff. Check him out. Survival Sherpa. Aaron Foster cut a cord of wood. I think he found my channel because he's a, a tanner. He brain tans and hopefully we'll see some more videos about tanning from him because he's, uh, you know, he's an experienced tanner and he has stuff to say about it. Cool guy. Just another uh, homesteading metalhead tanner. Brian Larson of Pennsylvania. I was just kind of getting prepared to do this and I was skimming through the videos and I started watching his video and I was just sitting there just watching him chop. You know, and I, I've had other people comment on my videos where I just chop a lot. And they're just like, yeah, I don't know why, but it's just really satisfying to watch someone chop wood. And he's showing really great accuracy and efficiency. You can tell he's just kind of in the zone. He's got his whole system down. It's pretty efficient. Michael Larson from Prince Edward Island, Canada. He sent me a picture and just a short email about his cordwood challenge. He cut a cord of wood. And he used like a kind of a cheap hardware store axe. It's a Garant with fiberglass handle. It's just sort of a pretty average, you know, hardware store axe as far as I know. And that just shows that you don't really have to accessorize to do this project. I'd say that most of the people used refurbished or used or inexpensive axes to do the challenge. And Daniel Lennox 
from Texas cut a cord of sweet gum. Uh, he says they call it sweet maple down there or sugar maple. Anyway, it's not it's not a maple, it's uh, sweet gum. And he says it was really hard to split, but that's what he has, so that's what he used. And finally there was me that makes eight. I already did a video when I finished the challenge. I cut three and a half ricks basically because one of the ricks was a lot of short wood. I have like a couple of really small stoves on the property so I just decided to cut a bunch of wood at 12 inches as well. I learned a lot. I improved yet more this year and uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again if I can. And Kyle Hallam from I'm Not Sure Where cut over a half cord of wood. He says, it was a lot more work than I anticipated. At first I struggled to get the right angle because I eyeballed it, but toward the end of the challenge I got down an angle and sharpness that I preferred. Bucking was the worst part of the challenge. I started to get into a rhythm toward the end. The next step after doing this challenge is to rehandle the axe I used and customize the shape. Thanks again for putting the challenge out there. I had a great time working on my axe skills. All right, we also had four people that cut a uh, quarter cord. Some of those wanted to do more. Some of them just planned to do a quarter. That was the minimum last year. This year, the minimum is going to change. We'll talk about that in a minute. See, David Jones, she just jumped right in there and went for it. Uh, had no idea what she was doing. You know, doll axe. The first tree she cut down, it probably took her as much energy to cut that tree down as it would take me to cut the tree down, limit, bucket, and split it and stack it. Point being, that she just went for it and was undeterred and she stuck with it and she improved especially since when i first posted about the cordwood challenge to like various axe groups and stuff i would have these guys you know presumably like full-grown men who collect and use axes whining about how they couldn't do it because their wood was too hard and they wouldn't do it and it was so much work and it doesn't make any sense and why not use a saw and blah 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 okay patrick hale was the youngest member at uh, 17 years old and he probably would have cut more, um, but he had a bunch of mishaps with his axes. He started with what is basically the equivalent of the Grand Forest Brook Scandinavian Forest Axe made by Holtz, though. Uh, same, same as the Husqvarna Forest, Multipapers Forest Axe. It's just a really light axe uh, to be processing firewood with it. Actually, I, I would recommend using that axe for, any, for this project for anyone that wants to get really good with that axe, because you will get really good with it if you do a whole bunch of wood. But it really is kind of undersized too, and it requires a lot of skill to use. So we got him a council tool boy's axe, but then the handle broke and he made another handle. I think that broke. Anyway, he had a bunch of mishaps. He's making handles and stuff. He ended up finishing a quarter cord. So way to go with all those mishaps. Also of note, he cut, uh, I think all, or at least mostly dead wood. And that is way harder, let me tell you. We're talking um, probably twice the work, I would guess. I don't know. It's a bunch of work. For work done and overcoming obstacles, I would say that, you know, he gets extra merit points. And for being young and being someone that's interested in being out in the woods, hacking on wood, uh, not just sitting on social media all day long. M. Will Things. This is a guy that always wear. he always has the bandana over his face, very mysterious. Uh, he has crazy, his videos are insane, very, very creative. And he cut a quarter cord of wood and then he stacked it up and lit it on fire and burned it down into a pile of biochar, which is just awesome, I think. I mean, it's just work, people, just work. And Down East Primitive Skills on YouTube. Uh, he's an interesting guy. He does uh, primitive skills, axes, homesteading type of videos. And he cut about a quarter cord. I think he wanted to do more as well, but you know, duty calls. And it, this is an expensive project in terms of like time and energy for anyone to undertake. Whether you like it or not, whether it's good for you or not to get the exercise and all that, not everyone can afford to, to take the time and it does take a lot of time. It's a, a good quarter of a cord, maybe a third. And honorable mention for coming in some somewhere under a quarter cord, but people that wrote me and told me they did it, or maybe sent me a picture of their um, pile of wood. Al Stair Fleming and Dave Henderson. So I, I'm pretty sure I, I understood them correctly that they were they came in a little under a quarter cord. All right, so thank you guys for participating. Your really the people that made this happen because I can throw a party but it doesn't it's not a party if nobody comes right so you guys made it you know look fun doable so now we have you know made this grow and got a bunch of people to see it like actually see it happening right so it's not just a concept I'm, I'm not out there saying like I'm gonna do this for the first time 
you know, go for it. So yeah, I think it'll be a lot bigger this year. I've had a lot of people contact me already. So looking forward to the coming season, uh, there's going to be a few changes. One is that the minimum has changed and the measure has changed. The new measure is not a cord, it's a rick. Now a rick is a stack of wood that's vertically sided. So say you put two stakes in and you fill the space in between with wood. And in this case we're filling it four feet high because a standard cord is four feet wide by four feet high by eight feet long. That's a good measure. So we're doing it by ricks and it doesn't matter what length of wood you cut to fill that rick. It doesn't even matter if all the wood's the same size to fill your rick. Because if you think about it, we're all making the same amount of cuts for each rick in terms of bucking cuts. And bucking cuts are the majority of the work in this uh, whole project. The best way to kind of even out the amount of work that we're all doing is to go by bucking cuts. And so that's why I'm going with the rick as a measure. And there's more reasons, I'll tell you why later, but basically I think that a good historical cord is four foot long pieces, four feet high and eight feet long. The equivalent of that is cutting any a rick of any size and, or any length of wood. I'm kind of trying to look at it as uh, this is a historic, this is the equivalent of a historical cord, like an axe cord wood equivalent from say the uh, early 19th century or the 18th century. This also allows people to cut any length of wood they want. I don't care if you want to build a log cabin. If you can stack that wood up and say I cut both ends of this piece of wood with an axe and I filled up a rick with it, that's fine with me. I, I could care less. It just opens up a lot more options for people because there are quite a few people that don't actually, that want to do the challenge but they don't actually even burn you know, wood for heat. Uh, I don't mind if people start now, but the official start will be January 1st. I don't want to make it too long in the future. I'm thinking uh, actually March 1st to September 1st might be good timing because it allows people like me to cut in the spring and then season my wood through the summer months and it'll be ready to burn by fall. But for people who still have snow banks in June, whatever, you know, your conditions are, it still allows the full summer to cut wood. So please give me feedback on the timing. As always, uh, stay safe and don't underestimate how dangerous these tools are or that working with trees are. And you know, you need to accept that responsibility before you walk out there. So every time you pick up that ax and walk out in the woods, you're taking a chance that you're gonna cripple yourself permanently. They incur like large doctor bills, have time off of work. I mean, are there people that rely on you to bring in money, what's going to happen with your job, etc. and so on. Is it worth it to you or is it not? And if you've never done this kind of work, not possible to understand how dangerous it is. Uh, especially felling is really, really dangerous. And um, felling with an axe is more dangerous. You're welcome to use saws on the back cuts of your felling. You know, cut your front notch with the axe. That's, that's a mandatory but if you need to wedge the tree to push it a certain direction or stay safe, and please do if you think it's going to improve your safety. I have never had to do it, but I just, you know, I can pick and choose my trees as well. Another super dangerous thing that a lot of people could get into easily is uh, cutting dead trees. So they have, you know, limbs that can fall off and hit you in the head. They can just break, like, because you don't know, it might be, you know, when our tan oaks die here, for instance, they get attacked by beetles. Sometimes within a year, the top falls off just, just like that on its own, let alone with someone whacking on it, you know, over and over again with a, a heavy tool. Um, or having it fall or maybe hit another tree on the way down and break in half. There's all kinds of things that can go wrong with felling. You know, any experienced feller probably could tell you stories of all kinds of close calls they've had or the time they almost got killed or the time they got injured. We really encourage people to stay with small trees. You know, 10 inches and down is great for, for cutting with an ax if you can do it at all. Just uh, be aware, stay safe, and do your homework. You know, spend a bunch of time reading and uh, all that stuff. The books that I always recommend, uh, Morris Kahansky's Bushcraft, Dudley Cook's The Axe Book, those are must-reads if you're going to do the Cordwood Challenge and you haven't read those yet, get them. Okay, that's it. Until I make that other video and I launch the official Cordwood Challenge, I will see you then and stay safe and work smart.